Hey, welcome to our first example on Bernoulli's equation. So in the last few videos, we've been deriving Bernoulli's equation, which is listed right over here. And in this video, I want to do a pretty typical example so that we kind of understand how to use this equation. So here we have a pipe going from point one to point two. And this point one uh, elevation difference to pipe two is two meters, so that's uh, stated right there. The difference in height uh, between one and two is two meters. And through this pipe, we have water flowing, and we're gonna model that water as an ideal fluid. So the mass density of water we're gonna take to be 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, and the water is flowing through the pipe from the left uh, going up and then exiting here on the right. Now at the entrance we have a pipe diameter of six centimeters and at the right at point two we have a pipe diameter of four centimeters and both of these are circular cross sections uh, so they are circles at both ends and then we have this flow uh, velocity v1 here on the left and v1 is equal to five meters per second and also attached to point one, we have this gauge, this pressure gauge, and it's reading 75 kilopascals of pressure here at point one. And at point two, we also have a gauge, but that pressure is unknown. Uh, so here at point two, the pressure is unknown, and we also don't know what the velocity of this exiting fluid is. And so that's what we're going to determine in this example. So we have two parts to this question. Firstly, the velocity at V2 or at point two. So what is this unknown velocity here? And then we also need to figure out the absolute pressure at point two. So this gauge is gonna give us gauge pressure. And from gauge pressure, we're gonna to have to determine absolute pressure. And if you remember, gauge pressure, I've written the equation down here, gauge pressure is the absolute pressure minus one atmospheric pressure. And one ATM was equal to 101.3 kilopascals, and this is at sea level. So we're gonna assume this entire system is at sea level, and we can use this gauge pressure equation to figure out what our absolute pressure is at point two, once we figured out the gauge pressure. Okay, so let's start with part A. What is the velocity V2 at point two? So because this is an ideal fluid, we can use the continuity equation down here, which is V1A1 equals V2A2 to figure out what V2 is. So here on the left, we have a velocity one of five meters per second, but we also need the area. So what is A1? Well, because this cross section is a circle, we know that the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. So what is the radius in this case? Well, if the diameter is six centimeters, the radius must be three centimeters. And if we convert this to meters, uh, the equivalent meter radius is going to be 0 0.03 meters. So that is the radius uh, for this area of a circle equation. So pi times r, which is 0 0.03 meters squared. Okay, cool, so we have v1 and a1. Now let's go over here to the right side. We need to figure out what v2 is, and we know the area. So on point two, the diameter here is four centimeters. So that means the radius is going to be two centimeters. And if we convert that to meters, that is gonna give us 0 0.02 meters. Okay, so that means area two is pi times radius, which is 0 0.02 meters squared and our V2 is our unknown. So now let's use the continuity equation to figure out what this V2 value is. So down here, I'm gonna write V1A1, which is five meters per second, times A1, which is pi, times 0 0.03 meters uh, squared, and that is equal to V2, which is our unknown, times A2, which is pi, times 0 0.02, meters squared and you can see that the pi's cancel out from both sides and if we just solve for v2 v2 turns out to be 11.25 meters per second so that is the exiting velocity of this water that's flowing through the tube uh, here at point two so v2 is 11.25 meters per second okay awesome so we figured out part a so i'm just going to write the answer over here 
uh, V2 is equal to 11.25 meters per second because we'll need that velocity in the second part of the question. So the second part of the question asks for the absolute pressure at point 2. So we need to figure out what the absolute pressure here is at point 2. But in order to do that, we only have gauge pressure here at point 1. And the gauge pressure at point 2 is unknown. So I think a good place to start would be to fi first figure out what the gauge pressure at point 2 is, and then use this equation down here to figure out what the absolute pressure is at point 2. And we can do that using Bernoulli's equation. So if I were to draw a streamline from point 1 all the way point two. Remember, because this is an ideal fluid, we can use Bernoulli's equation, in this case, to figure out what P2 is. And P2 is gonna be the gauge pressure at point two. And then we'll take that gauge pressure and convert it to absolute pressure. So let's do one step at a time. Firstly, let's look at this left side of the equation here for uh, Bernoulli's equation. This left term is corresponding to point one. So all of these values here are gonna correspond to this 0.1 value over here. So let's try to determine some of those. So let's start off with P1. So P1 is going to be the pressure at 0.1. So the pressure, uh, the gauge pressure in this case, reads 75 kilopascals, which is equal to 75,000 pascals. So we want everything to be in consistent units. So I'm going to convert kilopascals into pascals. So how about V1? So V1 is equal to 5 meters per second. That was given in the first part of the question. And then we also have Y1. So we need this Y1 term here uh, because it's, it's right there. And Y1 and Y2 are really points in elevation from whatever datum that we assign. So if I were to draw the zero elevation here at point one, then y1 would be zero, and then y2 would be two meters. Now, theoretically, you can draw the datum wherever you want. Uh, it can be at any level, any elevation. It's really up to you, I think, to make things a lot easier. If you draw it through one of the points, then one of the terms is gonna cancel out. Because in this case, y1 is zero point, the point one is right on the datum. So we'll see that this term cancels out because that goes to zero. So let's do that. Let's draw out the datum right here. And I will say that's the x-axis. And then surely enough, going up would be the y-axis. So y1 in this case is zero meters, right? Okay, cool. So we have all the values here on the left-hand side. Our row value here, 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 and here are all the same. It's gonna be this 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And then G, of course, is our gravitational constant, which is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so what about the right side of this equation? So everything pertaining to point two right here. So pressure two is our unknown pressure, and this is going to be our gauge pressure. Now, velocity 2, we figured out in the last part, which was 11.25 meters per second. And then finally, y2 is going to be, well, it's going to be the distance from our datum up to that point. And the question gives us that value of 2 meters. So y2 is 2 meters above that datum. Now, I'm going to scroll down a little bit so that I can write this equation. But I think we have all the terms we need for plugging it into Bernoulli's equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the left side first. So all of this stuff pertaining to point one. So we have 75,000 pascals, that's pressure one, plus one half rho V1 squared, and then plus our rho G Y1 term. So that's gonna be 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, and then that multiplied by y1, which is zero. So you can see that this term right here goes to zero. And this left term is gonna equal, well, this right term, which pertains to point two. And we have all the values we need for point two here. So we have our unknown pressure, which is our gauge pressure at point two, plus one half rho v squared. And then finally our rho g y2 term. Okay, cool. So we plugged in every single value that we could and our only unknown is P2. So I'm gonna spare you all the boring algebra, but just know that this term goes to zero. So we just have this initial pressure at point one plus the one half rho v squared uh, on the left side equal to P2 plus one half rho v squared plus rho times g times y. And if we solve this out, we get a value of 
P2, the gauge pressure at point 2, is 4,598.75 pascals, or about 4.6 kilopascals. Great, we figured out what the P2 value was, but remember, this is gauge pressure. So this gauge right here is about 4.6 kilopascals. But the question asks us, what is the absolute pressure at point 2? So if we go back down to this equation right here, our absolute pressure is going to be our gauge pressure plus 1 atm. Or, in other words, our gauge pressure is absolute pressure minus 1 atm. So I'm going to rewrite this equation uh, in terms of absolute pressure, and that's going to be equal to the gauge pressure plus 1 atm. So we already know what the gauge pressure is, right? We figured that out. That was uh, down here, 4.6 kilopascals. Uh, so now we just need to add 1 atm to get the absolute pressure at point 2. So 4.6 plus 1 atm, and 1 atm is this value right here at sea level, 101.3 kilopascals. So the absolute pressure at 2 is equal to this 4.6 kilopascals plus 101.3 kilopascals. And this turns out to be 105.9 kilopascals. Again, that is the gauge pressure plus the 1 atm. That gives us our absolute pressure right here. So awesome. We figured out uh, the absolute pressure at point 0.2, which is this value right here.